And we're back with some analysis with David Ignatius of The Washington Post, CBS News State Department correspondent Margaret Brennan, and CBS News senior security contributor, who is also the former deputy director of the CIA, Michael Morrell. Great to have all of you here. I want to start with this Senate committee report, which could come as early as this week, about some of the methods that the CIA and the U.S. used after 9-11. Um, Michael, you heard the president on Friday say, we tortured some folks. I know the president. Um, I know that he believes what he said. Um, but what I think people need to remember is that when the CIA undertook these techniques, they had multiple legal opinions from the Department of Justice specifically saying it was not torture. Mm -hmm. And yet, Margaret, we have this report coming out, which will be highly critical. It is believed of the CIA um, that not only were these techniques used and could be considered torture, but also that they yielded very little intelligence information. Right, and there's been uh, a lot of concern in the administration, though they say these are sort of the sins of the Bush administration. They're afraid the Obama administration may pay some price, or more broadly, the country will, because of backlash. Um, there were some talking points that were allegedly accidentally leaked to the press this week, where the administration was trying to get ahead of what could be some of the damaging headlines coming out of this, uh, including countries that helped host secret prisons, who they were, what happened at some of those, and the fact that some allegedly were not fully informed within the administration itself. David, what do you think of this, generally speaking? I mean, they've been working on this for five years. And, you know, the headline from the Democrats who lead the committee is going to be that not only did we do things that were wrong, I mean, the president said that, but that they yielded little intelligence. As a journalist, I, I have to believe that telling this story as fully as possible is a way to put this terrible period behind us. So I think it's good that the report's going to come out. I'm going to read the report, but I'm also going to read the minority report by the Republicans because they argue that the claim by the majority that this neat yielded no intelligence, that it was it was uh, of no purpose, uh, the Republicans are very critical of that. And from my sense of, of this material, the proper position to take on this is to be agnostic. I mean, we won't know finally where the piece of intelligence that led to the identification of Osama bin Laden's hideout came from, and to s say that, 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 that we do, I, that seems uh, to misstate the record as I understand it. Mike, I know that you have signed a non-disclosure agreement. You're the, we're the deputy director of the CIA. You've read all of these reports. So you can't speak specifically about the content. But you are critical of the way this report was put together. Am I correct? Um, the one thing I would say about the reports um, is I would agree 100 percent with David. Read all three of them. Read all three of them before you come to any conclusion. Um, in terms of process, I think it's important to note that not a single person who approved the programs or who was involved in the programs were interviewed by the committee. Not a single person. Um, Nora, if a reporter filed a story without doing a single interview, I think they would be fired. Well, how is it that a report that was worked on for five years that they didn't interview any of the principal players? That is a good question for the committee. Mm -hmm. um, on the way that this was then carried out, this investigation, we know it has ensnarled the current CIA director, John Brennan. He emphatically said that we did not snoop on these computers, which were technically CIA computers that were used by Senate investigators, but they did look at Senate staffers' emails. Should this trouble us at all? I mean, just constitutionally speaking, that the CIA was looking through Senate investigators' emails, David? Yes. The, the CIA inspector general made clear that the conduct of CIA staffers who somehow, we still don't know precisely the technique, looked into the Senate staffers' computer files and found that they had a document that, in the CIA's view, they weren't authorized to have. That, that should worry us. That does seem like a, a moving across the separation of powers. Uh, the, as Senator Chambliss said earlier on this show, there isn't evidence that John Brennan, the director, knew about it, and uh, so that, uh, in a sense, puts him outside of this issue. But, but it, was, it was a terrible mistake. Just the final point I would make is, we shouldn't forget that these issues of interrogation are going to happen in real time. I mean, this is being conducted entirely as an historical exercise, looking backward. But we're getting involved in a ter tough fight against 
uh, ISIS uh, in Iraq and Syria, where these issues of what do you do with people you capture is going are going to come up again. They're 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 real time questions, not historical ones. Mm -hmm. I want to turn now to the situation in Israel and Gaza. Uh, this morning, another attack, likely by an Israeli airstrike on a UN school uh, that was sheltering uh, thousands of Palestinians, uh, at least 10 dead, 35 injured. Margaret, you cover the State Department. You've traveled with Secretary Kerry. Um, another ceasefire collapsed this week. What does the administration do? There's tremendous frustration because uh, the administration will very sort of plainly acknowledge that in a 140 square mile area, which is the size of Gaza, you cannot truly have a pinpoint operation. You are going to have mass civilian casualties, nearly 2,000 civilians so far, 8,000 injured. And there's a lot of concern about that body toll. Um, and because of that, there's been this push to find any way to stop the fighting and to have the ceasefire. And you saw this embarrassing sort of unraveling of diplomacy in just a few hours uh, in these past few days. But the diplomacy is really messy on this. Mm -hmm. um, it is not clear who truly can have influence over Hamas. The bet has been the Qataris and the Turks can wrangle them at negotiations, but it's not clear whether they have, as President Obama said, full control mm -hmm. over all the Palestinian factions on the ground. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it's been very clear that the Israelis will only end the fighting on their own terms, mm -hmm. on their own time frame when they're done with these operations against tunnels. David, you had a really good uh, piece this week titled John Kerry's Big Blunder in Seeking an Israel-Gaza Ceasefire. What was his blunder and what are you hearing about what's next? I think the mistake Secretary Kerry made was in, in seeking this short-term ceasefire to end the terrible violence. He ended up empowering Hamas and its allies, Turkey and Qatar in particular, uh, and, and um, in a sense, taking power away from the more moderate elements, moderate Palestinians under uh, Mahmoud Abbas, the moderate Arabs in the region. I've learned in the last few days that Secretary Kerry, uh, in the last uh, week, since this intense criticism by many people, including me, has moved to try to do what he can to strengthen the role of the Palestinian Authority under Mahmoud Abbas in any future settlement in Gaza. So for example, the Palestinian Authority will police the checkpoints between Gaza and Egypt. The Palestinian Authority may be responsible for paying salaries in Gaza. In all these ways, I think Secretary Kerry has maybe learned a lesson that you want to come out of this with moderates stronger and, and radicals close to Hamas and in Hamas weaker. Well, I would say to that, though, I mean, Kerry, when I was with him just a week and a half ago, we, he drove to Ramallah and he visited with Mahmoud Abbas. Um, but he has been tremendously politically weakened by what has happened in Gaza and what appears to be a strong show of force by Hamas. The difficulty here is, if you remember back in April, uh, the Israelis were not willing to work with a unity government. And ironically now, the call would be for there to be a united Hamas uh, some members working with a more moderate delegation in these talks. That structure seems to have fallen apart, but the Egyptians, uh, a number of countries are, are emphasizing, as you are, you need to empower the moderates. The question is whether they can be at this point. Well, that's where Secretary Kerry should be and I think is trying to be now. All right. David Ignatius, Margaret Brennan, Michael Morell, great to have all of you this morning. Really fascinating discussion. Thank you so much. And more ahead, we'll be right back with former Nixon White House counsel, John Dean. Stay with us.